Hi, welcome back everybody, it's Mike Newton at Lytham Golf Academy. Got a new product to review in this video for you and it's the Homna TW747 drivers. I've got the 460 and also the 455 drivers to sort of test. A couple of different head sizes here, just maybe promoting a slightly different ball flight for a certain player. So we're going to test both of these, GC quad on the floor, give you some numbers as always and my personal feedback on the looks and the feel of these golf clubs. Okay, so Homne, it's now making a bit of a, um, a sort of surge into, well, definitely the UK market, and I'm guessing that, um, sort of across the world with big uh, player signings like Justin Rose, obviously throwing some money at it, and I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be some of the big players coming on board as well. So a bit more of that high-end product in terms of that higher price point, a um, little bit more sort of high quality in terms of shaft is what Homne is sort of saying. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, we've got two head offerings in the 747 range we've got the 460 and the 455 so that's referring to the cc capacity of the head so the 455 only a fraction smaller but just shaped a little bit differently so it does look considerably different on the head size compared to the 460. so we're going to start off with the 460 first as i say got gc quad on the floor here so we'll get started we're hitting some shots and give you some guys some feedback at these clubs so first instinct popping this down by the golf ball is it's a very sort of classic uh look obviously the 460 it's pretty big from that front to the back section 455 is a little bit tighter but a very clean look there's no alignment aid on the top it's that black polished gloss finish um sort of silver face and it just just a very sort of rounded shape very sort of classic there's nothing too wacky happening with that look at all which i like it looks really nice behind that golf ball very sort of large profile head in this 460 so very confident inspiring that's first one hit Pretty loud crap to that. I felt pretty good, just slide up that right hand side. But not a bad strike there, and that's getting into that 293 area. So not a bad little opening there. So we've got a couple of weighted screws on the sole of the of the of the 460 version, which are in the center. Um, these I believe aren't changeable, so they are more of a fixed um, item. So I'm guessing this 460 is more of that more forgiveness uh, aspect, and maybe that's that player who's trying to sort of get that MOI low in the face, further back, to try and create that sort of more uh, higher MOI and that more stability maybe on those miss hits. So the other bit of technology that Homner are saying uh, is happening in this is the ET40 uh, composite crown. So ultra thin, very, very lightweight crown, obviously saving weight, which then repositioning, sort of lowering that club head again, increasing that MOI and the saying this is the, um, the lightest, thinnest uh, crown in the whole industry. So pretty bold statement there. But, you know, you can sort of hear, you know, when you tap that finger on it, you get that carbon sort of sound to it. That was nice. Feels a really nice sort of flight there, to be honest, and that's getting a little bit further with that one. So 296, so promising numbers to start with there, and a really f a flight that I quite like. The, the acoustics that is, is quite loud, actually, for a, a sort of composite um, titanium mix. We tend to sort of experience that slightly duller uh, acoustics, but a little bit tinnier with the sound of that. So the other talking point is the club face. We've got what, what Homner says is a four-fang uh, club face, which sounds amazing. <laughs> but basically, it's, it's, a, it's a flexible club face across a bigger section of the face. So again, it's all about miss hits and keeping that ball speed up all across that club face. It does sit lovely behind that golf ball, I must admit. Oh, that was a bit on the bottom. I mean, it's flighted fine. It's come out a little bit low, as you expect from that slightly low in the face strike. I tell you what, that's not done that bad. 286, not a massive drop off. That was definitely lower in that club face. I'm guessing that spindle had crept up a little bit, but I'd expected that to sort of drop back a little bit more on that yardage because that was quite a low strike there. So this head I'm hitting here is a 9.5 degree and we've got some obviously adjustability in the neck sleeve and this is quite a different neck sleeve that I've never seen with any other brand so obviously it's, it's you know you take it out adjust it but you've got like a separate 
sort of sleeve inside the hosel of the club that you just with a little tool as you move it around so we've got an open a close an upright and a flat setting here which just slightly adjusts loft and also face angle as you move that adjustment around then the shaft goes back in so what what is a little bit more unique here is the shaft doesn't actually rotate around uh, the sort of hosel so the shaft will always go in one position the alignment of the grip and the logo and everything will stay in one position um, it's just this sort of sleeve inside the hosel that actually rotates that does all the adjustment for you so the adjustability that it offers when you're moving this around is loft wise you can go up one degree and um, play it as it is at nine and a half or you can go down one degree um, lie angle you can adjust by two degrees upright to into the flat position but the, this is where it's a little bit confusing the flat position is actually a standard lie even though they call it a flat maybe I should have just maybe call that standard because the, the flat setting is actually the standard setting of standard loft standard lie standard face angle yet they call it an FL which I'm guessing is is flat so you've got up and down by loft one degree lie angle up to two degrees upright back to uh, standard and then you've got a club opening or closing the face by a, a range of up to three degrees so there's quite a bit of adjustability in this setting I've got this in actually in an upright setting because obviously I'm quite tall so this is putting my loft at, at standard at um, 9.5 it's putting my face angle at square but then it's obviously putting two degrees upright on that lie angle again good strike a little bit of that right hand side but again into that 290 so get some decent distance there it feels really sort of good acoustics a little bit loud for my personal liking but again sound sound everybody's got their own sort of perception of sounds look behind the ball is is, is really really nice so um let's move into the 455 head so the slightly more compact one a little bit different than the weighting we'll talk about that and we'll test that and then we'll look at some numbers towards the end okay so we've now got the 455 head in the same shaft we're well, going to talk about the shaft in a minute uh, first instincts looks wise again it's five uh, well I, I presume it's five cc smaller which is m not a lot at all but obviously cubic capacity can be different ways shapes or form um, it looks such a different shape and it's more shape that I like it's definitely more compact so the player who likes that more compact head a little bit less from that face to the back edge of the golf club a little bit more squashed in and um, probably slightly deeper in that club face but a, a, an absolutely stunning look again it's clean on the top no sort of alignment aids but sits very sort of square and it looks a beautiful shape really really nice okay we'll get this first one hit okay that's a little bit off the bottom but it's flowing out really nice straight away they're different acoustics that sounds very different to that first one not as loud yeah it's dropped off a little bit again that was a bit low in that club face but pretty accurate start so definitely a, a, a different sound straight away there we'll hit a few more and see if that sound changes because that was a little bit low in the club face yeah definitely a different sound that feels really good Yeah, so that's running into that sort of high 280s there. So yeah, diff definitely a more muted sound. Much, I much prefer that sound against the 460. Again, personal on the sound. Everybody's sort of different on that. What's happening a little bit different in the 455 is these weighted screws in the bottom is changed. So we've now only got one and it's positioned towards the back and into the toe section. So typically, you know, this is probably aimed at a slightly better player who likes that smaller compact head. Maybe doesn't quite need the forgiveness of the 460 and weight in that weight pulling a far back there. And with, with the weight working more into that toe, sh toe section, creating a little bit more of a, um, a, sorry, a fade bias club. So less chance with that weight in the toe of that toe flipping in and going left most players are better, or better players don't like to see that ball missing left so it's a little bit more of that sort of fade bias in in the sort of weighting of the head feels stunning really nice yep again getting to that 293 so seems some really nice numbers um, so talk a little bit about the shaft so we've got the Vizard and uh, well I've particularly got this Vizard um, FP7 
in an X-Flex. So this is one of Honda's sort of shafts which are made in Japan, hand rolled and aligned. And this is the feature that they've got obviously with this adjustable sleeve that's in the hosel is the shaft is obviously lined up um, and it doesn't rotate around. So it's always perfectly lined up to get the maximum performance out of the shaft is what Homner is sort of saying. Lovely, much prefer the sound of that. Feel of it, very solid feel. And again, that's running, ooh, that's a little bit long one. Just got over that 300 yard mark there. Okay, so that's the 455, more compact head against the 460, very different sound, bit of a different feel for me. Uh, but let's go look at some numbers and see how those two clubs are performing. Okay, so looking at the two clubs, it's got a 460 on the top, 455 in the bottom. So look at uh, ball speed first, so 157 against 159 and a half. So a little bit more ball speed with the more compact head. Obviously a little bit of strike and just sort of play a little part of that. Um, looking at backspin number, so 2172 with a 460, which um, is a really good number for me. So quite a controlled spin number there. You see a couple coming out a little bit low as I just move my strike and one just creeps up a little bit, 26, but by any means not not high sort of numbers. You see that first one I hit with the 455 was very bottoming. I mean, you saw that drop off that distance at 276, but look at the spin there. And again, that's my strike, isn't it? It's pulled it up. But surprisingly, the, the more compact head, which would typically sort of, you would think it would create a slightly lower spin number, it was just a little bit higher for me on those uh, particular shots. So I did get more ball speed, but my spin was a little bit higher. So you can see the distances there are pretty much identical because of that alteration of the spin against the ball sort of speed. Um, start side angle in terms of the start location of the golf ball in relation to target, you can see 1.1 right with the 460 and a little bit more to the right with the uh, 455. So possibly that little bit of weighting in that toe section, just holding that face more, more uh, sort of, or slightly more open coming through that impact. So again, less chance of that sort of ball moving up that left hand side. Right, okay guys, so there we go. There's the Humna uh, Tour World 747 range of drivers, both 460 and 455. So two very different shaped drivers looking for that different type of player, whether you're looking for more forgiveness or that more compact look with that slight more sort of fade bias um, surroundings. Then obviously we've got options to try and suit all players. Some great adjustability in the next sleeve, a little bit different from maybe other brands we've seen of how they actually go about it. But these um, aligned spined uh, shafts then don't have to rotate so they stay perfectly aligned in every single setting that's in the head. So quite a nice little uh, feature there in these particular clubs. So higher price point, again with Homna, it's more that top end, it's more that premium. So about $599, I think it's around sort of 550 uh, pounds over here in the UK. And again, you've obviously got custom fit to work into that as well. So, as, as you know, I've obviously got one of the shafts here, but it's different weights, different flexes of the shafts to try and dial in, you know, to get the uh, numbers exactly right for your your sort of club delivery really coming through that uh, impact area and get that desired ball flight that you're sort of looking for or trying to create a less of a, a miss basically uh, in your particular game. So we've got full custom fit options here at Lytham Golf Academy. So if you are local and you would like to have a go with a Homna and would like to sort of book a custom fit, then obviously just comment down below or send me an email and we can obviously get you uh, organized and hooked up and get you um, sort of trying the sort of product and see if it sort of works for you. That'd be really interesting to sort of see. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd love to hear your comments as always on the Homna products, price points, have you tried it? You know, is this something that you'd like to sort of go out there and try yourself? Obviously love to hear your thoughts as always. So do find comments down below if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy the content smash that subscribe button hit that bell icon follow my social media platforms both instagram and twitter and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon